We live in a time when you can Google most everything, including financial questions. But what you may end up with is googly goop. Here's one of our certified financial planners to set you straight. If you need more information about this topic or anything else financial, why not click right here? Now you know. If you want more information about this topic or anything else financial, click right here or give us a call. Many college students ask about whether they qualify for Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid is actually a government partnership between federal government and state government, so it really depends on the college student's residency state. So in Florida, for example, most people will not qualify for Medicaid as a college student unless they also have a child on their own. A better option if you don't qualify for Medicaid would be to purchase insurance through healthcare.gov as many college students will qualify for a large subsidy. One question that often gets Googled is when should I use a TOD designation? For those who don't know, TOD stands for Transfer on Death. And that sort of designation should be used on any of your accounts that don't have a named beneficiary. It's essentially a way of putting a named beneficiary on those types of accounts. So named beneficiaries are usually found on annuities or retirement plans, but you can put TOD, or sometimes called POD, which is pay on death, on your bank accounts or on your brokerage accounts, which are in individual name or joint name. And that's a way to pass those assets without probate to those beneficiaries whom you name. So that's when you would use a TOD designation. Thanks. I've been asked, is a 401k the same as an IRA? Well, not really. While they're both tax-deferred investment vehicles, a 401k is an employer-sponsored retirement plan to which you can contribute and also receive employer matching contributions. An IRA, well, it's self-funded only. Contribution limits differ as well. If you're under age 50, you can contribute up to $19,000, that's in 2006, uh, to your 401k, and you can only contribute $6,000 to the IRA. If you're 50 and older, you can do a catch-up to your 401k of 6,000 for a total of 25k. Again, in 2016, the year, and you can only do a total of seven to your IRA. So, bottom line is, you get the biggest bang for your buck from investing in your 401k. So the question asked of me is, are children? So the question is. Are child care expenses tax deductible? And the good news is they are. They're actually better than the deduction. They are a tax credit. The IRS has come up with a child care and dependent tax credit, and the IRS allows you to take a credit up to $3,000 for one child and $6,000 for two children. The idea is the credit is even better than the deduction because it is a dollar for dollar reduction of your tax bill. So if you owe the IRS $3,000, you take a credit for one of your children for qualified expenses, that would be daycare, those types of things, you now owe the IRS zero. So even better than a deduction, there is a tax credit, and hopefully you'll get to use that. Okay. Well done. Okay. okay, so a common question I get is how much of an emergency fund should I have? And the answer is it depends on your situation. A general rule of thumb is three to six months of your living expenses, but that's not the 11th commandment. For someone just getting started, three months would be a great goal to have. However, for those who are further along, maybe nearing retirement or have an income that fluctuates a lot, six, month, six months would be a better goal. Um, at the end of the day, the main thing is that you have an emergency fund as part of your comprehensive plan. So I'm often asked, why do I need a savings account and do I need a savings account? And my answer is, yes, you do need a savings account. And there's two primary reasons why. The first one is using a savings account for a, a sinking fund, sort of a savings account for specific needs such as a vacation or a new car purchase or uh, some life cycle event. The second and most important reason to have a savings account is to make sure that you're covered for emergencies. You want to have three to four months of income in a savings account to cover things such as sudden illness, uh, major appliance breaking, having to replace your roof due to a hurricane, whatever the case may be. Savings accounts, cash on hand are really important things to have. So the question is, should I consolidate my debt? And in general, the answer is yes. Typically what you see in a debt consolidation is people take four or five high interest credit card balances and consolidate those into 
one home equity type loan at a much lower interest rate, say five, six, or seven percent. And over the course of the payment of that debt, you can save hundreds, even thousands of dollars in interest costs, depending on the size of the debt that you're actually consolidating. So the answer is yes, absolutely. Consolidate your debt.